Hi, I'm Maimon. Welcome back to one of my videos. In this video, we'll be focusing on the Cosway gaming chair. And I've already done other videos on the unboxing and the features of this of this chair. So if you want to go check them out, you can go ahead. But if you're an owner who already bought this product and want to figure out how to assemble it, then keep watching. So we're going to get right into it. We actually have a manual that comes with the uh, chair. Um, the first thing we want to do is probably clear the space. Uh, okay, so it's going to move this off to the side. All right, you okay? Okay. So as for the actual assembly of this chair, I looked at the manual. It seems pretty easy and beginner friendly because there's only one, two, three, four, five, six steps. All right, so we'll start first off with the product. Uh, I mean, the, uh, the parts. First, we have the headrest. I mean, the backrest, the butt rest. These are covers that go on the side. Uh, then we have the adjuster bar right here, the gas rod. These are telescoping parts. The way that these go is that the smaller one goes in the big one that goes in the biggest one and basically what should happen is that when you hold it upside down it should look like a telescope then there is the star base the five wheels an assortment of screws where oh there it is i can't believe i missed that an assortment of screws you have um uh, 8 by 20 millimeter and 5 by 10 millimeter and then you have you also have a uh, hex screwdriver and then you have the armrests so let's get right into it the first step is assembling the base first off what you want to do is you want to take the telescope and you want to take the gas rod make sure that this orange button is facing the top and you want to put the gas rod or you want to put the telescope on the gas rod so that it looks like this. And I guess, I'm guessing that it just goes down with a friction fit. Next up, what you want to do is you can either put the wheels on now or you can put the gas rod on, which is what I'm going to do. So I'm going to take this here. Oh, at least so we can keep this in the center. And we're just going to stick this through. So what should happen is that It should just fit right in. I'm guessing that there is no mechanism for actually keeping it in because as you'll see on the box, there's nothing about tightening it. There's nothing about putting bolts in. It just seems that you you, you put it in. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna put on the wheels. The wheels, they also don't have screws. So you might, at first you might be confused, but actually, What's happening is that they just pop in. Just like that. So you want to repeat that for all of the other wheels. I'm just going to get them right out. I'm going to put them in. And what you're going to notice first off is that when you try to put when you try to push them in, it's going to start rotating on you. So what you want to do is you want to grab on the part that's not rotating and push it in that way. So right here, which is in between the two wheels, you want to push it in. Just like that. The cool thing about these wheels is that they swivel, which is pretty much what any chair that you, pretty much any chair that you use in your lifetime should have. But there we go. The base. There we go. Huh. That's pretty simple. All right, so now we're going to go on to step two. Step two it deals with the back re the bottom rest and the arm rest. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the bottom rest out of its packaging. And in the packaging, it came with the footrest already attached. Let's see if we can take this out. And what we're going to do is we're going to lay this flat. Let me set this aside for a second. So we're going to lay this flat a bit. Let me see if I can... Okay. 
Okay, this one doesn't lay flat, but... What we're going to do now is we're going to take the armrest out of their packaging. And for the first time in this assembling, we're going to add some screws. So first off, with this one, we're going to take the J screws. Now, the J screws, there are... Okay, hold on. Where's my... There are many more J screws than there are the, um, wait, yeah, there are many more J screws than there are the H screws, which is going to be important in, later. But for now, what we're going to do is we're going to take the J screw and we're just going to set some aside for now. And what we're going to do is we're going to position the armrests. So let's see. What we're looking at is trying to see if it's left-handed or right-handed, but as you can see right now, there is a left-handed symbol on here, L. So if we open this one, there should be an R sticker. Oh, okay, there's some more tough packaging. This one? has R on it. So as you can tell, this one is supposed to go on the right hand side of the back uh, bottom rest and this one's supposed to go on the left side of the bottom rest. If you have trouble understanding where the left and right hand side of the bottom seat are, um, basically just flip the seat over and these things sticking out should be on the back side of the chair. So relative to this position, this is the right hand and this is the left hand. Spatial awareness is very important when you're assembling any type of item. A lot of people make fun of IKEA for having very hard to understand instructions, but to me they're pretty easy to understand if you have good spatial awareness. Not to flex or anything. So what's more, this is the left side, so what we're going to do is we're going to take the left hand armrest and we're going to take two screws and they go in these two holes right here. And then we're going to attach them. All right, so we're going to put a pillow under just to support it while we put the armrest on. Now, the first struggle I'm gonna have with this is actually trying to get it on. So I'm guessing there are three screws here, right? The logic is there's probably, if we put the armrest on, it's probably gonna block it here if we put it through these two screw holes. So that means that your two screws will go here and here. Whenever I say screws, I mean bolts, but it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to put the bottom rest here. As you can see, the holes line up perfectly. And first off, we're going to put each of the bolts in by hand, only a tiny bit, just so that we have enough finagling room for the other one. However, they give you finagling room already on the, uh, the arm rest itself, so it should be easy to put in. Now what we're going to do is we're going to take our handy dandy hex driver that they gave us. And first off, we're going to just hit, try to screw it in as much as we can by hand. And then tighten it with the hex driver. I always like when they, uh, when companies package the product with the tool in hand, because it also, it's, it's a, a very, user-friendly way of designing especially for people who are just moving into houses they might not have the uh oh dear uh they might not have the necessary tools in order to set up a chair just like this so including a hex driver in the set which is something that pretty much all companies do is very important all right so while i put this uh right hand side right hand. yeah right hand side armrest on you might be wondering um why I'm like really going over these steps. And a part of that is because like I said earlier, a lot of people find IKEA instructions very confusing. Um, and I just want to make sure I cover all the bases because you know, you don't want to assume that everyone knows exactly how to do something. You just, and some of these things you, you learn from experience. Like for example, I learned from experience that you have to put in the screws by hand first and then you want to tighten them because I've seen a lot of people do before if they 
put one screw in, they tighten it, and then they realize they don't have enough space to put in a second screw or bolt to, uh, to secure it. So now this one. These appear to be very sturdy. And we're gonna set them aside. Okay, probably, I'll, I'll leave it like that. The next step, let's see. The next step is attaching the bottom to the back side. All right, so maybe I didn't have to put that away, okay. So, the tricky thing about this is that this has to be facing downwards. Okay, you can do that. Okay. All right, so maybe that isn't tricky. All right. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a another J screw. We're gonna need two of them. And I'm guessing that's on each side. So that means we're gonna need four of them. And what we're going to do is we're going to put them two on each side and attach it to the uh, armrest. If I didn't mention earlier, uh, the difference between the J and the H screws is that there are 12 of the J screws, which in the packaging you should be able to notice, and there's two of the H screws. Now the difference is that the H screws are 5 by 10 millimeters and the J screws are 8 by 20. Okay, so also the J screws should have blue on them, by the way. So if some one of these doesn't have a blue on them, that would be very tricky. But I think we're okay. Just to clarify, the the H screws are these really, really, really tiny ones, by the way. If I wasn't being clear around that. But anyway, now we're going to attach the backrest. So, like I said before, two screws on each side. Um, probably the easiest way to do this is... Okay, we're just going to attach them. We're going to jump right into it. No hesitation. Okay. And now for the glorious reveal. Oh, there we go. Okay, that's just gonna go back here. Okay, don't worry about that. And now what we're going to do is you'll see on the side of each of the sides of the backrest, there are two holes. It's pretty self-explanatory where those go. Um, what I'm gonna, what well, what we're gonna do here is we're going to first we're gonna put some screws on this side, and then the cool thing is we're gonna be able to push it back, and then we're going to put screws on this side because this side is just fixed. Or you can do it the other way around. This one is, you can have it just fixed on this, and, and then put the screws on. It doesn't really matter. So first off, put some screws in. Wait a second, is that plastic in there? You know, on second thought, I think we're gonna do it the way I suggested earlier because it seems easier. If we just lay this down, or actually on the other side, it should be relatively easier to screw it on. All oh, right. So now we want to sort of coordinate where it's going. Okay, so as you can see, there are two holes. This one has a circular hole and this one is ovular. You wanna put the screw in the circular one first because putting the screw in the ovular one and then tightening it is not gonna leave you a lot of room in order to deal with the circular one. So now, with that in the, that in the hole, we're gonna put the second one in. And then, at this point, you can either tighten the screws, or in my case, what we're going to do is because I, you know, I work with cars a lot, I always like to put in all the screws and then tighten them. We're going to put the two screws on this side. I keep saying screws, they're actually bolts. Okay. And it's actually a good thing that I suggested that because 
this has a bit of a friction with the uh, these uh, metal things. I don't know how to describe them. And like I said earlier, there's a bit of plastic in there that you have to get out of the way. Okay. Another thing to mention is that apparently uh, this blue thing on this, the bolts is actually thread locker. When you tighten, when you put it in, it tightens and it basically keeps the bolt in. So for anyone who doesn't recognize that like I did, just a, a fun little trivia. All right, so at this point, we should be able to tighten it with the Um, with the... Okay. Um, Bella, have you seen it? Bella's asleep. Okay. Oh! It's on the, it's on the couch. Alright. So, I think what we're going to do is we're actually going to speed up this part where I'm tightening it. So, I'll see you in a bit. A few people might be asking why I don't just do it like this. Um, I mean, one reason why is because you can't really use it like a lever that way, which is what screwdrivers are screwdrivers that are shaped like this are really meant to do because you have the longer side gives you more leverage but also because this is actually a screwdriver on the end so we actually can't use this as a, a hex screwdriver wait or unless no okay no we can't but just something my dad mentioned because uh, my dad was actually mentioning that why don't you just use the easier way but sometimes things in life aren't that easy That was uh, deeply poetic. I didn't mean it to be that way. But hopefully we should be able to do this just this one just round. Because on the other side, you have to keep taking the hex driver out and then putting it back in. And there we go. So now with the backrest attached, what we're going to do is we're going to cover up that kind of ugly piece with the cover. Now, you'll notice in the manual that it says that there are two of these pieces. My initial thought was that there was two of each of these pieces. So actually what you're supposed to happen is you're supposed to get one of each. One of this is for one side and the other one is for the other side. So first off, we're going to do on the left hand side, we're going to put on this cover. You really can't mess these up because they're actually kind of shaped in order to go on the specific side. So let me just make sure we have the right screw. So this is step four, by the way. This, the screw that we're going to use is actually the H screws. So that means we actually get to finally open this tiny little part. There we go. I don't know why they uh, packaged it like this. They probably should have put it into different baggies. Although that might have been more bad for the environment. Uh, it doesn't really matter. But for now, all you want to do is align it up. And it looks like it's going to be a bit tricky to do by hand. So what we're going to do is we're going to take the hex driver and we're going to put the screw on it. And then as we position it in place, we should be able to get right into tightening it. You guys see that, right? Okay, good. There we go. Okay, so everything looks nice here. Now the cover on the other side, like I said before, is shaped specifically for that side. So as you will tell, this one is shaped like a... Uh, 
I can't think of anything. This one is shaped really funny. So what we're going to do is we're going to put it on, put the screw on the uh, hex driver, and then basically just go to town with it. All right, so before we go on to step five, uh, I just want to mention that it's really important, I, and this is coming from my experience working with cars, to make sure that you either, after you're done assembling, come back and retighten everything, uh, which means taking off this cover and retightening the bolts. And then after a, a day or two, you want to come back, open it up, and then retighten everything. Because what I've seen on cheap reviews uh, on Amazon of, of, of cheaper chairs, not this one, is that this, the, the bolts and screws can tend to come loose. So what you want to make sure is that after a day or two of use, that they don't come loose. So I'm actually with this chair, the reviews seem pretty good. So I'm, I'm not too worried about that, but just for caution's sake, keep that in mind. The next step is going to be step five, which is attaching the base. So the not, not the star base, but actually the um, this arm right here. So this arm right here is attached with one, two, three, four bolts. And it seems like they're the J bolts. So we're going to take those out. And what we're going to do now is I'm going to take those pillows, kind of put them here, and I'm going to face this chair towards you guys. All right. All right, so let's keep in mind how this is supposed to be orientated. So it seems like this part right here is the bottom. And you can tell because it has the little shape right here. And this right here is the top because they have a little divot. So with that in mind, what we're going to do is we're going to take this lever thingy. And we want to make sure that this octagon shape is facing upwards. Wait a second. All right, so scratch all of that. You'll actually see, looking at the chair, that this is the, the bottom on this picture. So we're going to flip that around. This octagon should actually be facing downward. So it should be facing away from the back. Okay, it's not, that's not confusing at all. All right. So like I said before, just put them in one by one, only by hand, and then you want to tighten them later. Okay, so looking at the part itself, I'm a bit curious as to what these two are, these two um, holes are for. And looking at the actual instructions, it doesn't seem like there's any use for them. So, I mean, that's probably just just there for some reason, I guess. Some things in life, you, you we, ju we just don't question them, you know? And we just accept them. That was also um, unintentionally deep, but we're dealing with uh, building a gaming chair, so I don't know. Who am I? Aristotle? All right. So on the bottom. You want to make sure that this is really tight, especially because this is what you're going to be sitting on. Um, and what concerns me is that there actually seems to be no screws that are attaching this to the gas rod. It seems like it just pops on, as many things on this uh, chair do. But hopefully, everything works out. Alright, so now we're going to get to the final step, step six. Putting the top part on the bottom part. So first off, what I'm going to do is, just for the sake of the video, I'm going to move all this stuff out of the way. Bella is still a... Never mind. Bella awoke. Okay. We're going to move the base to the center here. Um, I'm just going to push down one more time to make sure that everything is fit in the inside there. And you can see where my concern comes from. There's actually nothing that seems to be like actually holding the thing in place, like with screws or anything, but hopefully it stays on. So you want to be a real alpha and just 
It's actually not that heavy. You want to lift the chair and this hole right here, you just want to slowly, got that, got that camera shot, slowly jam it in there. All right, so as you can see, there's no click. There's nothing that indicates that it was kept in place. Okay, let me sit down. Let's see. Okay, it seems like there was no click either. But it seems that when we pick up the the chair... So, yeah, you guys can see where my concern comes from. Alright, so... With that out of the way and slightly worrisome, we're going to put it back on. I'm guessing that... Oh, oh as you can see, the uh, gas rod went up. I'm losing control of this chair. But I'm guessing that friction just holds it on. And as you sit down on the chair, it just starts to lock into place. Okay, so where is the thing? Okay, I'm gonna try lowering it. Already not a good sign. Let's see. What I'm gonna try now is lift is is um put this on its side and see if we can like push this in. Okay. So it looks like what's supposed to happen is you're supposed to be able to push the lever and look really closely. You're supposed to be able to push the lever. It should be able to press that orange button. Okay, okay I, I don't know what happened. Because when I pushed the orange button, it didn't do anything. But I'm very breathless right now. Let's see if it works. Up, lift, down. Please, please work. Hello? All right, so here's the thing. With my other chair, what, what I could really have done is that I could just sit on it and then, okay, never mind. That's not a good demonstration, but it would come down by itself. I'm guessing that's because the gas rod on that one is not as strong. But my dad actually tried out this chair, and he was able to get it down when he pushed this lever. So what I have to do is, because I'm really light, is I have to... So, if, if you're very light like me, and you don't know how to get the chair down, just dance on it. It's just something I decided to mention for anyone who might encounter the same problem as I did. All right, so when you get up, um, and you uh, you push up, you'll see that it goes up by itself. So this is the maximum height that I can be at. With that out of the way, let's deal with all the other peripherals. The manual actually ends at that step. There's nothing else. But you'll notice that this chair comes with a few other things. It comes with a footrest and the footrest is easy to put on we took it off just by sliding it we're just going to slide it in this might require a bit of snaggling but eventually we're going to be able to get it in now my worry about this is that there's nothing preventing you from completely taking it out so if you just want to if you get home really quickly from uh if you get home really late from work and you just want to have a good recline and you just pull this out there's nothing stopping you from completely taking it off. All right, so it looks like I spoke too soon. It's a good thing because it means that this chair was well designed because when you take it out, you'll see that there's actually, okay, besides that, there's actually a mechanism that allows you to stop it. If you look here, there's actually a notch here. And if you remember from the unboxing video, we got some rubber gaskets. So you put two, two, two and two together, you realize Maybe the engineers, no, definitely the engineers were smart enough to think of this 
so that that means this, this chair is well designed. My dad was thinking there's no way that an engineer would have designed this and not that not thought that was stupid that it didn't have a stopper. So it's it's a good thing. What we're going to do what we're going to do now is there's actually another instruction manual for this. What we're going to do is we're going to uh, put the bottom in, and then we're going to put the rubber ring on the um, the notches. So first off. This is the right side, okay. All right, so what we're going to do is we're going to do flip the chair down. I need to get better at maneuvering things, but what we're going to do is we're going to take the foot rest, and then we're going to use gravity to put it on. So keep in mind that you want to put this the right way. When it flips up, it should flip up to the top. So that means keeping that in mind, this side, this side should be facing the top. When it's folded in, it's going to be facing the bottom. So you want to put it in just like that. There we go. That is, that is nice. So we're going to take our rubber gaskets, and it looks like there's only, there's only going to be one per, uh, per bar. So we're going to take them out. Let me just really quickly read the instructions to make sure that it's... So it says to cushion the bottom and then put them on. So it, it seems like you're supposed to do this during the assembly of the chair, but you can still do it after you assemble everything. Um, and then you want to put it on, you want to put the rubber ring just as correctly install it. So we're going to put it on. Get, get a close look at that. Because it's rubber, that means it should be able to just slide on. Okay. Have it down here. All right, it's all done. So by the way, just a thank you message to the uh, engineers who designed this product. Very good thinking. All right, so with that out of the way, what we wanna do now is focus on these two things. So another good thing about the engineers, they let this flip down so that you can just leave it under the side. So, and then you can, you can flip it up and it looks pretty cool. But anyway, I'll get to that in the future, the, the features video. But for now, finishing up with the uh, assembly, we're going to put on the headrest and I guess what I'm going to call this is the lumbar support because this goes on the bottom here. The cool thing about this part right here is that's actually a massager. So that means you can attach it to USB and it massages for you. I don't see any control around it though, so maybe it just has a fixed setting. Let me let me see. Yeah, it has a fixed setting. All right. So the way that this goes on. It's actually relatively simple. Unless... Oh, okay. You have these clips right here. As you can see, they're really elastic. What we're going to do is we're going to slide them through the bottom end right here. This little slit right here. You can see where my finger's coming out. You want to slide one of the clips through there. You want to do that for the other side. This is really cool. The engineers who designed this were not to, um, what's it called? Not to like worship them or anything, but well done. What we're going to do now is we're going to sort of stretch this up and over and then attach the clips to them. So let me think about this. So this is what it looks like. I'm trying to see if there's anything wrong with the what I have right now. Let me look at the instruction manual. Let me see if it's supposed to look like that. Okay, I'm, I'm just gonna assume that for the purposes of advertising, they didn't show the straps because on the actual advertisements, 
I just realized this is upside down because the orange part right here is supposed to be facing the top. We should redo that entire clip. <laughs> All right, so if anyone skipped to this part, because for I know for assembly videos, I always skip to different parts. Um, basically what we're getting at is that this orange color up here should be facing the top because the bottom side really has no patterning on it. So this one should be towards the top. Okay. I'm going to put the bottom clips right through that slit. Same thing here. You know, I have the I have I swear I have the biggest brain when I'm assembling a chair, and then I make mistakes like this. But it's all right; it's a learning process, you know. Not everyone can assemble a chair perfectly, especially not me. But while we're while we're assembling the chair, it helps us learn some other things that might be useful for assembling other things. Like if we had to assemble a couch like this, we'll use what we learned in assembling the chair and the assembling of the the couch. It doesn't really matter. What we have right here is a pretty nifty oof, lumbar support. That's actually a pretty new feeling for me because as you can tell on that chair, oh, you can't look at that. There's no lumbar support on that. So this is a completely new enlightening experience. Moving on to the headrest. I wonder how long this video is going to turn out. It's probably going to be like over 10 minutes. Uh, Moving to the headrest, the headrest is actually pretty easy. It actually just has a clip. So what you want to do, this is the front, this is the back. So referring to that um, lumbar support, there's actually no way you can get this upside down because it's symmetrical. I hope. On the back here, there's a clip that you unclip. Take these two holes and you sort of slip it through. I mean, I just realized you could probably get it backwards, but unless you want to have it just with the zipper facing out, but you know. There we go. Okay, let's see if this is adjusted to my height. Because you know, I'm I'm really sure. I'm like five feet one. I'm actually the tallest of my family, so maybe I'm not that short, but Whoa. I'm, I'm having a feeling that this is not how it, the headrest is supposed to work because my ponytail is above it, but. Oh. Oh, wow. So there we go. The assembly. So as you just saw there, this chair has very cool reclining um, especially the angle that you can go down to. I'm not going to spoil it because we're actually, in order to make this video not too long, because as you can already see down there, it's, no, not down there if you view, it's down there on the video that it's probably already super long. So we're going to split this up, like I said before, into three parts. The first part, we already did the unboxing. The second part is this assembly. The third part, I'm going to be talking about its features. So if you want to see more about this reclining, go check it out in that video. But for now, I'm Ayman and thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe. We've got videos on I and Ayman, especially the uh, home DIY vlogs, that kind of stuff. And keep a lookout for the videos on this channel that are about this gaming, reclining, racing, maybe if you're that kind of person, office chair. So for now, signing out.